Let me take you back in time. This is filmed in November when I was in the midst of working on my custom wedding dress. Clearing out my sewing table so I can actually get some sewing done is just how it goes when space is limited and things need to be kept out of reach of a small child. Going into this project, I hadn't intended on filming it and sharing it, so I mainly have footage of the last parts of this process, but I wanted to include them in this video to give some context for this enormous undertaking. I've had so much fun making this dress, but I've also spent so much time on it. I remember to change my needle for a fresh one here. I know I should change my machine's needle more often than I remember to. I'm also switching to the right thread color. But before I get ahead of myself, let me share with you the story of the straps. If I'd been smarter, I would have planned the straps from the beginning and made the bodice to fit the straps, not the other way around. At this point, I had already made the flounce that I talked about in my last video. That was already working and functional, and I had this idea of, ooh, I could switch between them. So I could wear the flounce to get some pretty photos, and then later I could change into the straps. So I made everything detachable. Um, that also meant that the construction of this was a bit odd to say the least. Um, so as you can see from my <laughs> very rough sketch, what I wanted was some kind of, they look a bit like angel wings or just like a wing shape. So it wasn't a sleeve as such, but it does extend a little past my shoulder and give like the illusion of something covering there. Um, and I knew I wanted to make, I think to achieve like the right amount of ruffling or like movement um, that I would make that part of the strap out of a rounded piece. I patterned it on paper first because that's how my mind works and then I cut it out in the fabric. I had so much of the fabric that I was able to do a lot of mock-ups with this so that was really cool. Uh, the initial shape I made was not rounded enough so I ended up slashing and spreading it a couple of places to get more volume where I could see it was lacking it. Um, and then because it was like something you would be able to see the underside. So I definitely wanted it to be, um, to be lined in the same fabric so that if it kind of moved around, all you saw was the pretty, pretty golden fabric. Um, and to be able to do that in a neat way, I, um, I cut out two pieces and then sewed them along the curve and then cut out notches so I could actually flip it out and iron it. This was fiddly, um, but I'm really pleased with the way it looked in the end, so it was definitely worth the effort. The other component of the strap is the straight piece, or the um, is the actual strap part, and initially because it has to follow the contours of my body over the bodice and I wanted it to fit quite neatly and snugly so I had thought a bias cut strip would be best to like give me that kind of nice movement over the body but I th something was not working at all it didn't work out right. Flashback to when I was constructing my first attempt at these straps. I had pinned the bias cut strip to the edge of the fluttery bit catching both main and lining layer of that piece in the seam. My plan was then to fold over the bias cut strip and use it to hide all of the raw edges by turning over the raw edge and hand stitching it in place. This worked really well. The bias cut strip, not so much. I wish I'd only done one and then realized it wouldn't work, but I still had faith so finished both straps entirely before scrapping it and trying again. see me trying to smooth out the bias cut strip after sewing it to no success. I was getting a lot of weird bubbling and what I think happened was my rounded piece that was like the fluttery part of the sleeve, I had to like pull that out to get it to actually be straight-ish 
and then the bias wasn't strong enough to keep everything straight. Um, so I ended up having to seam rip both of the straps. Instead of cutting bias strips, I cut strips on the straight grain instead, um, and that worked out so much better. They attached to the bodice in two places in the front and two places in the back with um, trouser hooks and thread bars. On the inside of the bodice, there is a snap closure as well, so they're kind of secured there. Is itching. Please excuse all the leaning back and forward, by the way. I figured out that I can balance my phone with my notes on my tripod, so I keep scrolling to reference what I've noted down. This footage is of me hand sewing the closures I just mentioned. I found a handy tutorial here on YouTube for thread bars, which I've linked in the description box for you. I tested all of this out on some scrap fabric before tackling the real deal. I really love the amount of freedom attaching the straps in this way afforded me. Being able to add additional closures to achieve just the right look was great. This clip also shows the last component of the straps I haven't covered yet, the pretty blue embroidery. at the top of the bodice and then with the snap on the inside but I could see over the bust curve they wanted to like slip to the outside so I added another um, attachment around the apex of my bust and then on the back piece um, the bodice curved in a little bit so it just went straight down so again I added uh, an attachment around the middle to make it seem more smooth and make it look connected fully connected even though it is completely separate. had from the very very beginning even when I was toying with the idea of actually buying a dress from new was adding some additional embellishments um, I'd been spending way too much time on Pinterest <laughs> painting pretty pictures and one of the things I was seeing again and again that I really liked was colorful embroidery or some kind of contrasting color moment on these dresses um, and I really wanted to add that to this dress as well, even though I'd already gone pretty rogue with the color. I, I like this idea of having something more. <laughs> um, so I found some embroidery on Etsy and ordered it home. I ordered two different kinds, but when it came in, it was pretty obvious that I had to go with one of them. And I did definitely play around with whether I wanted to add the embroidery to the actual bodice piece, drape it down over the skirt, like what was the plan here? Um, in the end, I actually decided to add it to the magical straps instead. So the embroidery piece kind of lays up over my shoulder and I flip them so they go opposite. What did I actually do? No, I think I mirrored them so they go in the same direction, kind of um, growing up over my shoulders. And because the design was a bit busy, I also cut away some of the excess um, embroidery bits that was just too much also for like the real estate I had going on. The embroidery I bought came on a mesh backing and I painstakingly cut out all the embroidery. So I only had the embroidery pieces and then pinned them on and then hand stitched to both straps. I think I spent approximately six hours on this portion per strap. Um, it was very soothing though, very like time consuming, but soothing meditative process of just tiny little stitches um and it looks really pretty it did one thing i mean i had figured it probably would but it's hard to know how it'll actually look in the end um it did definitely alter the fluttering of the sleeve it gave it more structure um but it still looks really good my phone is ringing editing this and I swear I've looked at my phone every time I've played this clip to see who was calling me. But this is the end of the saga of the magical straps. I finished all the fastenings, the embroidery was fixed on and the straps are functional. The last part of this whole wedding dress adventure is the skirt. So stay tuned for the next episode in a few weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Hi hi!